So guess what? We all know what's been happening with the, the Trump, and uh, we all know that the reason Hillary Clinton lost had nothing to do with her being a bad candidate or the Democrats' message, <laughs> that that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here with Ron Cl- Ron Placone and uh, Hank Thompson, and uh, I also... Whoa, <laughs> there wow. it is. There it is. We were all waiting. Fancy. Ooh. Beautiful. So Eric Byler of the Young Turks reporter uh was at a fight for 15 rally a week or so ago and he interviewed a young man who was a uh work working at a, a waffle house and he has a very thick accent and the knowledge and insight this guy lays down is unexpected and um so i'm going to play some of it for you right here and i think it will hopefully um kind of get, get get rid of some of those preconceived notions we have about uh, Trump voters and uh, and blue collar workers in general. So let's let's play. Let's play this right here. I've not got any degree whatsoever. I'm just damn white trash hillbilly from the holler. You know, I don't need a damn degree for my words to mean something. I come from coal country. Uh, my grandfather was a coal miner. Actually, all my grandfathers and uh, most of my great grandfathers were coal miners. You know, my great uncles, cousins of mine were all coal miners. The coal industry's been uh, dying for a long, long time. You know, uh, through mechanization of labor and, you know, through uh, good things like, uh, you know, uh, more affordable green energy, but another thing that's really been uh, causing death of it is uh, natural gas, you know, hydraulic fracturing. There's another argument that's typically made, and it usually does pretty well with voters, and that is that the changes that you talked about, globalism and mechanization and that sort of thing, also coincided with our country becoming more diverse, and a lot of people blame immigrants and blame people who are, you know, different from us for causing the problems that we have. Ain't no damn immigrant stole a coal job. I'll tell you that right now. You know, and really, even if they did, would you really be blaming the immigrants or the people that hired them? The people that are, because the only reason they would hire an immigrant over an American citizen is if it benefits their wallets. You know, these people that, you know, they're not paying payroll tax on, these people that they're paying blow minimum wage, things like that. Really, you know, can you really, put the blame on the immigrants in the first place you know Were you pers- no no you can't because guess what immigrants are human beings who want a life just like you that's why they come here they don't come here to dick us over they come here because where they live sucks so hard that they want to come to the land of opportunity it's the greatest compliment in the world that immigrants want to come here we now have less mobility by the way economically in our uh, country than they have in europe just just so you know we're not that place anymore. Uh, why? Neoliberalism? How about horrible corporate policies since Bill Clinton that have hollowed out the middle class? Our number one non-governmental employee in the United States is Walmart, who tells their employees to, how to, they, to tell them how to go on government assistance. Our number one employer in America pays Poverty wages, and, and while they're making billions and billions of dollars, and you wonder what's wrong with our country? This guy's laying it down. He knows it's not, the immigrants ain't screwing us over. It's the guy who's hiring the immigrant. Why does he want to hire an immigrant? Because he wants to exploit somebody. He got it. He's got it. So there's more to this. Anything? anything? Well, no, I, I'm, I'm curious. I don't want to jump too far yeah. ahead, but I'm curious to know like where this guy is politically because you hinted at it. Oh, let's what? Let's yeah, look, yeah, yeah. Look, real so quick, let's find like, that out. That's always been the disconnect between this whole immigration policy about stealing your job. You know, it, <laughs> the immigrants don't have decision making power. Right. The guy who writes the checks who makes more money when they when they write smaller checks. Right. They're the one that they're the people that deserve your anger. Correct. It's just insane. Yes, it's it's a misdirected anger. Yeah, at the, I think know, it's because they they like. Well, I, I would also screw people over if I had the boss's job. I think they kind of relate to that, or there's a I, I think there's that, a logical gap that's not. I being think they're manipulated connected. into into being angry at. It's, it's what I have always say. Whenever you find yourself being angry at someone lower on the economic ladder than you, pretty good chance you're being manipulated by someone yes. higher. I quote that all the time. I have it stitched on a pillow, actually. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the one he sleeps on. Yeah. Yeah. Waited by Donald Trump's offer to rebuild, you know, put all the coal plants back in business? Oh, hell no. 
I know a lot of people that vote for him just because of that. I mean, if you were to ask anybody in Dickinson County three, four years ago, what do you think Donald Trump? And they'd say, well, he's a brand jackass Yankee who probably should have had his ass whooped a long time ago, you know, to be blunt. But, you know, really, he has said so many times, we'll bring back every coal job, 100% of coal jobs. That's what he said. And these people are desperate to believe in something, you know. So there you go. So when you call them a basket of deplorables while offering them nothing, you wonder why you lost the election in the Rust Belt. You wonder why working people seem, you wonder why half the country doesn't even bother to vote. Right? So if you, that's pretty amazing what he just said. He admitted that the people who live there and Southerners like him uh, saw right through Donald Trump that they, that for three, he said three years ago, we think he's a Yankee jackass who runs his mouth. He's a carpetbagger. Should have gotten his ass whooped a long time Should've ago. Should have got that his was, ass whooped. That was a really good descriptor. I mean, he, he nailed it, man. Like that was, that was poetry. Let, let, let's give some credit. Should have got his ass whooped a long time ago. Let's be blunt. Yes. Except he promised to give them their jobs back. And he said, and we, they know he's full of shit, but that's how desperate they are for something. Hillary Clinton came back and said, we're going to take your jobs away. He said, we're going to give you a job. It's that, it's that old thing with, you're too young to know this, but Ronald Reagan and Walter Mondale. Walter Mondale says, uh, I'm going to raise your taxes. Ronald Reagan says, I'm not going to raise your taxes. Who the fuck do you think they voted for? Mm -hmm. The guy who lied. The guy who lied. <laughs> <laughs> and sounded so great doing it. There's more to this. This misconception, you know, especially with y'all in the liberal media, no offense to young Turks, you know, uh, but, you know, liberal media that, you know, this 90% of people are just, you know, ignorant about, you know, climate change, ignorant about, you know, the effects of mountaintop removal and all the health effects. Because keep in mind, we're the ones, you know, getting cancer from the coal mine practices, not y'all. So we can kind of speak on that matter. But no, what is 10% really are these anti-environment people? You know, 10% are just completely anti cop There's that 80% that here it is, they're struggling day to day. They, you know, the only industry they've got there is coal, and they're trying to hold on to what little bit there is, and they really don't care what it takes, you know, to keep that industry there or bring it back. You know, I'm educated, I know better that coal's not coming back. You know? So, I mean, again, it's... It it's amazing the, the 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 knowledge that this guy is laying down. You know, he's like, yeah, they're you know what you all think, meaning us in the liberal media, people on the left, what they think of people like him, uh, who work in coal mines and what have you. It's that you know we're all just we don't all give a crap and we don't care about the effects of uh, mountaintop removal. You know what how they all the bad stuff that happens because of that. And he says, we're the ones who feel the effects of it. We're the ones who get cancer. Mm -hmm. we're the ones. But that's how desperate we are. We have nothing else. So that's what he's saying. They have nothing else. And, you know, Trump, Trump is proposing a trillion dollar uh, infrastructure program. Maybe those guys will get some of those jobs. Remember how Barack Obama kept hammering on a jobs program? Every time he opened his mouth, he was hammering that jobs program. I don't remember him doing that once. Do you remember him doing that? <laughs> no. Do you remember how he hammered that for eight years and how he made the Republicans pay the price for obstructing his push for a jobs program? Do you remember that? No, he didn't push for a jobs program. He didn't make the fucking Republicans pay the price for obstructing him. That's what people love to say. You know, he had an obstructionist Congress for six years out of the eight. Okay, so he had two years to do stuff. He didn't do it. He did a smaller stimulus than he ever should have did. He never bailed out Wall, uh, Main Street. He did bail out Wall Street. And he gave us Mitt Romney's Romney care when he had a filibuster-proof fucking majority. Jimmy, something else I want to point out here is notice where this guy's at. He is at a fight for 15. Fight for 15. Rally. Because a, a lot of people, like especially like a lot of Clinton supporters, will say, well, you know, it doesn't seem a big deal now fighting for 15 versus using the cost of living. And it. No, it was a big deal to voters like that, especially voters in swing state that she needed. It was a big deal because the fight for 15 was saying the loudest that, hey, wages have not kept up with inflation at all, the at all. In fact, 15 itself 
itself is actually too low. Uh, so that's what that was symbolic of, and that was the message that well, the Democrats know, needed to have. They know if those people know fifteen dollars is too low, and Hillary Clinton, they're like, I'm, they're, we're going to have to fight Hillary Clinton to fight for fifteen. We have to fight her too. And what a horrible message, especially at this time when you live in, again, I, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but we live in the richest country the face of the earth has ever seen, and half of our country is poor. What does that say about our system? That says our fucking system is broken, and Hillary Clinton never acknowledged that. She's like, everything's working great, just incremental change, and you wonder why half the country didn't come out and vote, yeah. and the other half didn't vote for you. They needed that message. And now, I mean, unfortunately, they bought snake oil now. Now there's someone in charge of labor that doesn't even favor a minimum right. wage. So, right. but. That message was not across. That's why I, I think it's really poignant to point out where that guy is at. She, uh, she and this is in Virginia, by the way. Go she, ahead. She led the the fight for twelve. Yeah, the real strong <laughs> fight for. Okay, fine, twelve. That yeah. well, we could probably get eleven, eleven twenty five if we compromise down from twelve. The cost of your Big Real Mac strong. might go up. McDonald's, yeah. McDonald's in a in an off year makes over a billion dollars in profit. In an off year, they make over a billion McDonald's. They can afford, you know, like I say, in, in Seattle, they passed a $15 minimum wage. Did you remember how they closed up all those fast food restaurants right away afterwards? Because you can't afford, oh, none of them closed? You mean they all stayed open and everybody's still making a great living? All over Europe eight, and Australia, fast food workers are paid a lot of money, or a, a livable wage at least. $20 in Denmark. We, we right. did that story also in Australia. Australia uh -huh. has the government set the wages. Denmark has strong unions. In America, we have neither of those things. We have sh no unions. Uh, we have a corporate media that is anti-union. Um, you know, do you see how MSNBC, though, was wall-to-wall -wall coverage on the fight for 15? <laughs> <laughs> MSNBC is a fucking garbage dumpster fire, okay? Uh, it, it, the fact that they call them, they try to call themselves a, a progressive or a left or a lib is bullshit. It's, all, it's only left because this country is out of its mind. That's why. Um... They're so left, they, anyway. <laughs> well, let's not forget the reason a minimum wage exists, though, is, is so that high school kids can have a little extra spending money. Oh, wait, no, it's, it's so that people can afford to live when they work an honest job. I'm sorry, got confused. Dickinson County, Virginia has, you know, over 25% poverty rate. Average incomes are under 20,000 a year. You know, people are reliant on all kinds of public assistance and the schools are failing, they're consolidating, schools are shutting down, and we need, we need $15, we need a union. The only thing that these companies care about is the dollar. They don't care about us. They have never cared about us workers, not once. The only way that we get what we want is we resist hard enough that it's better for their interest to work with us then keep working against us. I was at this con direct action. That make basically it, sums up all persuasion. That's it. Like, that's you make it. it so that it's easier for them. It's less painful for them to work with us than to work against us. Well, and we had to put a hurt on them. He's not saying they're going to do the right thing. We're going to talk them into no. being decent people. He's saying we need to make it so that their interests align with ours. That's power, it. power concedes nothing yeah. without a demand. Isn't that the saying? That's my other pillow. I don't read that one. <laughs> that's and, the underneath pillow. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's bringing, he's, so again, that, so things had to get bad enough in America to where people started to go back to unions, direct action, public uh, dis civil disobedience, rallies, marches. Um, and, you know, they say the, the cost, uh, I, I don't know who said this, but I think it was, Benjamin Franklin, but the cost of liberty, the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. And, you know, that goes for the entire government, not just for tyranny uh, of a government, but tyranny of an economic system, which is implemented, which is also in collusion with a government. And so now I think people are awake, right? So now you can't blame lefty liberals. You can't blame any of that stuff uh, because now they have control of all of it. And so if, if used correctly, this could be uh, a real reawakening of the left. It already is. Uh, there, you go to Democratic meetings. Mark Van Landewitt is a big activist, and he's talked about this on the premium with me, about how 
Uh, he goes to these Democratic Party meetings and all these activists meetings, and he said they're packed. There are more people than has ever shown up. If you would have went there a couple years ago, there'd be a handful of people, and now you can't get in the room. And uh, he's been being told by all kinds of lefty organizers that Trump is the greatest recruitment tool that they've ever had. So now people are awake to the horrible things. Oh, my God, we're going to have Wall Street run our tre- sec- the Treasury Department like it always has? Yeah, but now it really makes me mad because Trump's doing it. Now they're too stupid to hide it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're... Oh, you mean our... It's our, so flagrant. Our foreign policy is going to be run by Exxon, the CEO of Exxon, directly? <laughs> Yeah, they're too dumb to hide it, right? Yeah, so it's just kind of what it is. In a sense, it's great. Now it's obvious, again, the ugly face of horrible things. Our, our foreign policy has always been done at the behest of Exxon and oil companies. Now they just put the CEO of Exxon and the goddamn fucking secretary. It's, again, the, so my theory of Donnie Tinehan's putting an ugly face on the stuff that we've always done is tr- real. It happens. It's happening. It's happened. And the fact that people are coming together to oppose it, it's already happened. It's already happened. Bill, Hillary supporters and Bernie supporters who hate each other are came together in those protests. So this can work. But the corporate Democrats are going to fight progress tooth and nail. They're going to they still aren't listening to that guy. They're still talk, they're going to talk about Russia. I don't know until the inauguration, maybe what a disservice. MSNBC is doing to the country by doing that. What a disservice. And so what do you say, Rob? Well, I was just going to say, like, like, yeah, because now we really need an agenda. And I think the Democrats should be watching that guy and going, this is our agenda. Because let's look at it from a historical perspective. With exception to the Bush years, uh, the last time Republicans had this stronghold was 1928. And then what did we see after that? Well, the Great Depression immediately after. But then after that, we saw a huge rise in labor. Labor. That's going to happen again. And I mean labor in the principal aspect, right? It's not going to be like literal because we do live in a different society now. But labor and the fact that we got to get back to the working class, we got to get back to the the organization, we got to get back to what that guy's saying, stronger unions, stronger human rights. And if that's not the Democratic platform, they are they are dead in the water. They couldn't even come out against the TPP in the Democratic platform. They couldn't even say what they wanted to do to fight climate change in the Democratic platform. They again, the Dem, the corporate Democrats have got to go. And if they don't go there, that's who they should, people should be angry at. But again, you, we know the knuckleheads on the left will reserve the most of their anger for people with no money and no power like Gary Johnson or Jill Stein or people uh, like me advocating true progressive reform or Bernie Sanders they're still smearing Bernie they're still writing articles smearing Bernie still writing articles smearing Bernie Sanders and Bernie Sanders supporters still that's still being done today in lefty Lefty news mags. Well, he's like Ralph Nader, though. I mean, don't you remember in 2000 when Ralph Nader endorsed Al Gore and, and campaigned for him? I, I remember that. Remember that? <laughs> hey, we're doing another live Jimmy Dore show the day after Christmas, December 26th. We're doing a live Jimmy Dore show in Burbank, California. Come see it. There's a link for tickets right there.